Welcome back. Today we are looking at chapter 27 and 28 in the Ramayana. Chapter 27 is called Viswamitra's Teaching of Divine Weapons. Then the great sage, Viswamitra, after staying that night in the forest, spoke the following sweet words to Rama on the next day. I am pleased with you. Be safe, O famous prince. I am giving happily all the suitable arrows to you with great love. Devas, Asuras, Gandavaras, serpents, and men of earth have dominated unfriendly enemies in war by various divine arrows, and I am going to give all of them to you. Please be safe. I am giving you the punishing wheel. I am giving you the wheel of Dharma. I will also give you the wheel of time the wheel of Lord Vishnu, the wheel of Indra, and also his diamond weapon, the Vajrayuda. Best among men, I am also giving you the blessed trident, the arrow called Brahma Crest, the glass blade missile, and the incomparable Brahma Astra. I am also giving you two shining maces called Modaki, the beater, and Shikari, the hunter. Rama, I am giving you three nooses called Dharmapasa, the noose of Dharma, Kalapasa, the noose of death, Varunapasa, the noose of Varuna, and an unequaled Astra called Varuna Astra. I am also giving you two bolts called Shushuka, the thin one, and Arthira, the drencher. I am also giving you one Astra by Penaka, as well as the Narayana Astra. Rama, I am also giving you two missiles belonging to the fire god called Shikaram, the tower, and Prathaman, the first one, and also that of the wind god called Vayavu Astra. I will give you two weapons called the horse's head and the poison arrow. I am also giving you several weapons for killing the Rakshasas, such as the horrible pounder called the Rankala, rods called Kampalam, and Kinkini. Valorious one. I am giving you the great arrow of Vidhyadaras called Nandanam, and also I am giving you a sword whose handle is studded by rubies. Rama, I am giving you the arrows which are liked by Gandavaras called Mohana, Prasvapana, and one called Prashamana. These are also known as the Bewitcher, the Inducer of Sleep, and the Pacifier. A tiger among men, son of the king, please take the following missiles from me. The Varshanam, which causes rain. The Santhapana, which causes sorrow. Vilapana, which makes one cry out loudly. The Mohana, the Bewitcher, which is the defenseless arrow of the god of love, Manmatha. Also, the Manava, which is a pet missile of Gandavaras. And the Paisaha, which is the dear missile of the devils and ghosts. Oh, tiger among men, I will also be giving you several good-hearted, powerful missiles like the Samvartha, the Masala, the Satya, and the Maya Maya, also known as the Whirlwind, the Club, the Truth, and the Complete Illusion. Mighty armed Rama, I will also give you the missile of the sun god called the Theja Prabha, which reduces the power of the enemy, the arrow of the moon god called Shirihira, also the fatal arrow of the Wasta called Sunhamana, and the dangerous missile of Baga called the Shithasu, which causes cold, and Manu's arrow called Manava. O oh, Rama, who is greatly valorious, these powerful arrows can take any shape they like. Please take them immediately from me. Then the pure sage facing east gave Rama the matchless chance for these arrows. These great collections were very difficult to get even for devas, and such arrows were given to Rama by that sage. 
Those great shining arrows then told Sri Rama, We are now dedicated servants to you, Rama. Whatever you order, we will accomplish them all. That powerful Rama, with a great pleasure, told them, after patting them with his palm, Please come before me when I need you, and he bid them farewell. Then that pleased Rama saluted the great sage and readied himself for further journeying. Thus ends chapter 27. Chapter 28 is called Viswamitra's Teaching of Power to Exterminate. Rama, having been purified with a happy face, on their way spoke to Viswamitra as follows. I have received the arrows from you, great sage. It would be difficult even by Davis to attack us now, along with these arrows. I also need to have the power to kill, sir. Hearing these words, the great sage imparted the knowledge of extermination to the pure and resolute Rama. O oh, Rama, please receive these shining armament sons of Krishna Sava from me, namely Satyavanta, Satyakirti, Drishta, Rabhasa, Pratiharatara, Praranmuka, Avanmuka, Lakshya, Alakshya, Dridhihanaba, Sunaba, Dasha Aksha, Shatavaktra, Dasha Shirsa, Shatodara, Panmanaba, Mahanaba, Dundanaba, Svanaba, Jocha, Shakuna, Nairasha, Vimala, Yungandara, Vinidra, Daitya, Pramadana, Sukshibahu, Mahabahu, Nishkali, Viruksha, Sarkshiramali, Drittimali, Vrittiman, Rukshira, Pitya, Saraimansa, and also two of them, Vidhuta, Makara, Karavirakara, Dana, Danya, Kamarupa, Kamarukshira, Moha, Avarena, Jirimbaka, Saravanaba, and Varana. These are the guys changing wizards as you are the eligible one to handle these arrows. Let safety be with you. Rama became overjoyed in his heart and received the arrows gladly. All of them had lustrous bodies, appealing in their form, harbingers of pleasant life. Some of them were like fire, some were like smoke, some were like the sun and the moon some with folded hands and others holding their palms as if they were ready to receive, spoke in a melodious voice to Rama, O oh, Rama, O oh, tiger among men, we are here to obey you. Please order us as to what we should do. Rama said, While being stored in my memory to the time I need you, please help me when I need you. Then saying that it would be done that way to the son of the Kakushta clan, and after going round Rama, they went away in a similar fashion as they had come. After learning about those arrows that could be used to exterminate from the sage, Rama asked him further, using sweet and soft words, What is the cloud-like formation, seen not very far above the mountain, over which a thicket of trees is shining, with animals spreading over it in a very scenic way, along with the numerous types of pretty birds flying and making pleasant sounds? A great sage, by the pleasant surroundings of that place, I understand that we have come out of the extremely alarming forest of Thataka. Uh, please tell me about the pleasant hermitage which we are nearing. Great sage, where are those bad people who are the killer of Brahmins? From which place would they come, and which rituals would they destroy? In which place should I provide protection to the Yagna? Which yakshasas should I kill? I would like to hear about this. And thus ends this chapter. So, when our former president here in the United States, George W. Bush, said weapons of mass destruction, <laughs> he has never read this book. These are weapons described in this chapter which I can't even visualize. They sound like gods that can take any form. And I know from other readings, uh, I think it's the Srimad Bhagavatam, that they are used via mantras. So you say a mantra and the arrow goes off. It's 
mind-boggling though and I wish the details were better here because they can take any form I guess so I mean you, you could this is the you see what this is I mean I guess I could keep them all in something this size that like just stick this in my pocket because this list of all these arrows goes on and on and on and on and missiles and clubs and whatever else and seriously there's only three of them they wouldn't have enough there's not enough arms to carry these things so maybe my coffee cup you know that fit them all in my coffee cup is kind of what i'm getting that they can take any sides and that they're gods or they're wizards of some sort speaking of which the word wizards uh i have never seen before in a hindu scripture this is a very European term. Uh, I'm not saying that there wasn't wizards in India. Uh, it's just this word I really don't associate with uh, any being of that nature. Uh, we think of them differently in, in, when it comes to Hinduism. But I've never seen that word, and I don't know if that is the correct translation. Um, so maybe deities, or I don't know what they are, but if anyone has any information about these weapons of mass destruction from 5,000 years ago, plus, whenever, please put it down below. That'd be really interesting to see. Uh, one last comment. I have mentioned in now a couple videos Ahimsa and this idea of Hinduism being non-violent. This chapter, chapters 27 and 28 of the Ramayana, the great epic, debunks the whole thing. There is no way you can tell me Hinduism is a non-violent religion and totally gets rid of violence when you have <laughs> that chapter. Th that is the epitome of violence. There is so much violence there. Those, I, it, yeah, it's that's a debunked argument for me. I'm not even getting into modern day things uh, of like the RSS or whatever else, uh, but it's just the scriptures alone Oh, us in the West, we are doing such an injustice to Hinduism and such an injustice to India and such an injustice by history by misinterpreting these scriptures. We did this in the 1800s. The Christian missionaries who went in in the 1800s into India and translated these scriptures and, and twisted them to debunk them was is an infamy. We, we need to retranslate these things. But over the last century, well now here it in the 2020s, the next century, it doesn't end this uh, eternal colonization of India. It pisses me off because India is a beautiful, amazing country. Yes, you have problems. Every country in the world does. But you are a great country. You are seriously a great country. And the history of India is a great history that nobody knows. In America, we learn where India is on a map. That is all I knew until I reached college, that India was on a map, that it was like shaped like this. I didn't even know there was 45 languages or 50 languages. I didn't know where, I didn't know anything. Actually, maybe, no, no, I didn't even know. I was going to say maybe I knew something because of George Harrison and the concert for Bangladesh, but then you don't learn these things. We don't care about you. We take your yoga. We take your religion. We, we take your gods, but we don't care. And it drives me crazy. That's what this station is. Sorry. Channel is about caring. Uh, I, I was talking to someone the other day about this, this religious um, dance thing I went to about a decade ago. I just moved into town. I didn't know anybody. I was lonely. I wanted a date. I was just like, ah, I gotta get out of the house. And it was this evening where you'd get together and do some dances from around the world and different religions and I thought, eh, what the heck. Um, there were some pretty ladies there. Nothing happened. I never went again. But at the end we were dancing around this really large statue of Shiva. R really big. I was like, oh, this is great because these, this is my god. And the woman who organized it, uh, I asked her afterwards something about, oh, Shiva, what do you think? And she just was like, oh, it's just, it's just a pretty statue. But yet you were lifting it up and raising it as if it was something amazing. But when it came down to it, it wasn't. It was just a toy. It was just a toy. No no better than my SpongeBob cup here. Just something to decorate your place with and make you feel like you're doing something spiritual. But the moment you want to talk about Lord Shiva, once you want to talk about the real God, she was completely off and disinterested. Oh, it, oh, it so frustrates me. We, we are doing harm to you. And I don't blame... I, I, I don't blame anyone from India who has some animosity against us Americans because we just are doing you an injustice. And I am only one person with a small channel here on YouTube and BitChute 
you know, not much impact, but I am on your side. I, I, Hinduism is the great religion. It's the greatest religion. I am proud to call myself a Vaishnava. And I am proud of this, this heritage. So I just, uh, anyways, I, <laughs> I don't know how I got to that point. <laughs> I, uh, it was a lot that happened this week and different things and conversations and whatever. Anyways, comments and all that, please, down below. And until next time, as we work our way through the Ramayana, thank you as always for watching. It means so much to me. If you would like to support this channel, if you would like to support me, I have books that I have written. There's a link down below to my website of all of them. They're not actually religious. Most of them are music-related. Uh, but, you know, you might find something you like. Please, that's a great way of supporting me. A few pennies. It, it is appreciated. And with that, I will say Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare.